In June 2020, I decided to travel to Rome, in Italy, immediately after the country had reopened its borders. In this video, I want to show you what travel in Italy is like now and share my top 20 things to do in Rome during the new normal. I'm super excited. We're heading out for the number one site in Rome today, which is, of course, the Colosseum. So luckily I did some research before coming here and already pre-booked my ticket online. So now I should be able to just go to the ticket booth and go straight in. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Oh, this is really weird. Like I'm here completely by myself now in the Colosseum, one of the seven wonders of the world and there's literally no one around me as you can see. This is a strange feeling. The Colosseum is the number one site in Rome. Commissioned in 72 AD by the Roman Emperor Vespasian, it was used for bloody gladiator fights, animal hunts, executions and reenactments of famous battles. During the inauguration games in 80 AD, more than 9,000 wild animals were killed in the arena. The shows in the Colosseum were extremely popular and up to 80,000 people could be seated in the amphitheater. It's truly an incredible sight and imagining that there would be like tens of thousands of people here watching people fight to the death. It's chilling really if you think about it. After visiting the Colosseum, I continued my ancient Roman tour. All right, so I'm now at the entrance to the Foro Romano and the Palatino. Um, it's a combined entrance now that's changed. I'll link the location down below so you can find it easily on Google Maps. And once inside, you have the choice of either visiting the Palatino, Palatine Hill first, or the Foro Romano, the Roman Forum. We're gonna start with Palatine Hill because that's where the city was originally founded. According to legend, Palatine Hill is where Rome was founded by Romulus in 753 BC. From its humble beginnings almost 3,000 years ago, Rome rose to become the greatest empire the world had ever seen. An empire that stretched from Britain all the way to the Middle East and lasted a thousand years. Palatine Hill was the most sought after neighborhood of Rome and the place where the palace of the Roman Emperor stood. It offers spectacular views of the Roman Forum below. Now we're in the Roman Forum and it was here that the nerve center of the ancient Roman Empire was. It was here that most of the important temples and official administration buildings were located. It was also the central marketplace that was here and uh, you can still see the ruins. It's super fascinating to walk around here imagining yourself in the footsteps of Julius Caesar, Augustus and many of the other famous Romans that once wandered these streets. And to complete our tour of ancient Roman sites today, now here we are at the Pantheon. The imposing 2,000-year-old Pantheon is Rome's best preserved ancient monument. Originally a temple to all Roman gods, it was consecrated as a Christian church in 608 AD. The building features the largest unreinforced concrete dome ever built. Once inside, you can look up to the so-called oculus that lets light stream into the Pantheon and symbolically connect the temple to the gods of ancient Rome. Really an impressive building, especially considered it's been like this for 2,000 years. That's incredible. I crossed the Tiber River to get to my next destination. 
We're now in a part of town that's called Trastevere, and Trastevere is a great place to have aperitivo, so pre dinner drinks with snacks. So here we are now having aperitivo, and it looks absolutely delicious. And as you know, this is my favorite drink in Italy, the spritz apero. Oh, it's so good. So, cheers, and let's see what the evening drinks. After the aperitivo, I walked around Trastevere some more and found a nice restaurant. It's time for dinner now and I got the most typical Roman dish. It's uh, spaghetti alla carbonara. Spaghetti alla carbonara is a tasty Roman pasta dish made with egg, parmesan cheese, bacon and black pepper. After dinner, I took the bus back to my Airbnb, which was close to the Colosseum. Good morning! So today we're doing something really special. We're traveling to a new country without leaving Rome. Well, how's that possible? Actually, we're going to the Vatican State, which is an independent state inside the city limits of Rome. It's the state of the Pope and the church, the Catholic Church, and we're gonna visit the Vatican Museums today. I'm really excited. Let's get in line. I already got the reservation. That's very important, make the reservation online, and then you just get in line and you go straight in. Vatican museums are one of the best and largest art museums in the world. With about seven kilometers of exhibitions and innumerable masterpieces, a visit to this museum is always an unforgettable experience. Some of the highlights of the collection include the classical statuary in the Museo Pio Clementino, a suite of rooms frescoed by Raphael, and of course, the Sistine Chapel that was decorated by Michelangelo and is home to some of the most famous paintings ever created. This is the Sala degli Animali, animals room, so it has lots and lots of statues of different kinds of animals, amongst them also some pretty scary monsters. So much art made me really hungry and to save time I decided to just head straight to the restaurant here in the Vatican Museum. I also looked pretty good. See tomato sauce with pasta and it smells delicious. It looks so good. And of course, as you can see, we're still in the Musei Vaticani. So here we are now in the center of the Catholic world on St. Peter's Square in Rome. Behind me you can see St. Peter's Cathedral and the big balcony in St. Peter is from where the Pope usually gives his blessing Urbi et Orbi to the city and the world twice a year, usually on Christmas and on Easter. But this year there was an exceptional Urbi et Orbi in March at the height of the crisis where the Pope was praying for an end of the crisis for the world. So that was a very special occasion here in Rome. In a city filled with outstanding churches, not one comes close to St. Peter's Basilica, Italy's largest and most spectacular church. It's a monument to centuries of artistic genius and home to three of Italy's most celebrated masterpieces. Michelangelo's Pietà, his spectacular dome and Bernini's 20 meter high bronze baldachin over the papal altar. It was very moving for me to discover all the outstanding Christian art in this church during the quiet setting of the new normal. After visiting the inside of St. Peter's Basilica, I decided to take the stairs up to its enormous dome. And once again, a bit of a surreal experience on this trip. I'm here on the roof of St. Peter's Basilica, one of the most important and largest churches in the world. And there's no one here, like no one at all. All right, so now we're gonna climb a few more stairs and then we'll be on the viewpoint and hopefully we're gonna have a great view 
of St. Peter's Square and Rome. Well, if you're claustrophobic, this is probably not the experience for you. And yeah, guys, I think the climb was really worth it after all. Check out this view. I descended to St. Peter's Square and continued to the next iconic Roman site. All right, and here we are at the Spanish Steps. They're called Spanish Steps because the Spanish Embassy used to be in this place. There are 135 steps from the bottom all the way up to the church at the top. The Spanish Steps, officially known as Scalinata della Trinità dei Monti, are one of Rome's major icons. The beautiful church on the hilltop is the Chiesa della Trinità dei Monti from 1585. Usually, the steps are a very popular meeting place for tourists and locals alike, but during my visit, they were almost completely empty. So, now I'm here in Piazza Navona, one of the most elegant squares here in the center of Rome. For more than 300 years, this square here hosted the main city market. Piazza Navona features three ornamental fountains, a domed church, beautiful baroque buildings and many cafes. The central fountain by Bernini from 1651 is called Fontana dei Quattro Fiumi, Fountain of the Four Rivers. It is decorated with personifications of the Nile, Ganges, Danube and Plate. And now I'm in the Campo dei Fiori, which is a really popular place here, especially evening for people to hang out and have a drink. It has a bit of a dark history though, because this used to be the site for public executions in Rome, and hence also the statue of the guy with the hood. He was executed here, actually burned alive for heresy in 1600. Sad story, but a really nice place. I decided to have dinner here on the square in this really nice looking restaurant and this is also part of the new normal. Usually this square would be packed with tourists but because of the new normal it's almost empty. This is a typical Italian starter. It's caprese which means tomato, buffalo mozzarella and basil. Now we're gonna have one of the most traditional dishes in Roman cuisine. This is saltimbocca alla romana and it's definitely one of my personal favorites. It is veal with ham on top and it's usually served with a white wine sauce. So yeah, saltimbocca alla romana, make sure to try that one when you're in Rome. And it's another beautiful day in Rome. Got a bit of a late start today because I'm getting a little exhausted from this trip, uh, doing so much sightseeing every day. But here we are, and today we're gonna go to Villa Borghese, which is one of the nicest outdoor parks in Rome. It's a bit Rome's equivalent of a central park. It's a super nice park with like lakes and lots of different paths that you can wander, lots of benches. And in the lake behind me, you see people can even go around in boats. It's a perfect place to hang out on a warm afternoon in Rome. We are in Piazza del Popolo, one of the most iconic squares of Rome. This obelisk here behind me was taken by Augustus from ancient Egypt. Augustus was the first ever Roman emperor. The huge Piazza del Popolo, or People's Square in English, was first laid out in 1538. Before the age of railroads, this square was usually a traveler's first view of the Eternal City. So now I'm here at one of Rome's best ice cream shops and that means something because there's lots of great gelaterias here in Rome. This is Fata Morgana and they use fresh seasonal ingredients and many say that this is the best artisanal ice cream in Rome. 
It worked and I think we got some really delicious treats here. So there was basil with walnut, that's the green one. Then there's pear, vanilla and chocolate. And there was another one called Bacio del Principe, so the princess kiss, which is hazelnut with chocolate. I think they're gonna be so delicious. Let's try the princess kiss first. Bacio del Principe. Mm, incredible. <laughs> Yeah, I can see why people believe that this is the best ice cream in Rome. This is amazing. And here we are now at the Fontana di Trevi or Trevi Fountain in English. One of the most iconic sites of Rome. The statues represent the sea god, Oceanus, and the horses represent the different tempers of the sea. It's such a beautiful fountain, and as you can imagine, usually there will be like thousands of tourists here, making it really hard to visit it, but with the new normal, it's pretty empty. The Fontana di Trevi is one of the most famous fountains in the world. It was designed by Nicola Salvi in 1732 and receives its water from the Aqua Virgo, a 2,000-year-old aqueduct. Tradition says that if you toss a coin into the fountain with your right hand over your left shoulder, you will return to Rome one day. I got the coin right here. I'm gonna toss it and I hope it makes it all the way into the fountain because I can't get up closer. All right, one, two, three. I hope it made it. I hope it made it. Maybe you saw it. I didn't see it. If not, I'll just come back to Rome anyways because I really love this city now and it's been such an amazing time here. Since it was my last night in Rome and to get in the right mood for my trip to Naples the next morning, I decided to have the most famous Italian dish. So obviously it's time for a delicious pizza and this is a place that's been recommended to me by my Airbnb host, so I hope it's a good place, let's check it out. In Rome. It's quite the stagione, so that means it has honey, mushrooms, artichokes, and in this case also egg and olives. Oh, it looks delicious. This is the most iconic Italian dessert. It's called Tiramisu. Here in a creative interpretation with the statue on top. It looks good. Let's try it. This is incredibly good. This is probably the best thing I've had on this Italy trip so far. So delicious. Wow. So those are my recommendations for Rome. What are yours? If you're from there, if you've been there before, please make sure to leave your tips and advice in the comment box below this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Max Nomad for new travel videos published every day. I'm Max Nomad and I will talk to you again soon.